Hello everyone. Today I want to talk about an Internet of Things protocol called MQTT. It sounds quite complicated to use but actually it's very simple. I have a Raspberry Pi on my network and on that Raspberry Pi I have loaded the Linux operating system and on there I've installed a MQTT broker. Now this broker acts as a, a go-between and so I can then use um, devices like an ESP32 or like a flow code simulation or some other embedded target with network capabilities and I can throw messages to my broker. On the other hand I can also receive messages from my broker to all these various devices um, and what what you can do is each value you send is subscribed to a topic um, so the, the, the topic might have a name such as um, front bedroom temperature and then you could look at the front bedroom temperature or you could look at all the different sensors within the front bedroom to install the broker on the Raspberry Pi is reasonably straightforward and what I've done is I've put together a bit of a guide on our Flowcode wiki. So if we look at the, uh, the component library page and then I go down to comms and I click on MQTT client and then if we go to making your own Raspberry Pi based MQTT broker and then there's a link here then this runs you through the process to get your broker up and running and then details on how to connect Floco to that broker. I already have my broker up and running and so what I've done is I've created a couple of Floco projects the first project I've made is designed for a ESP32. Um, I'm just going to be running it in simulation but it could just as easily compile and download to the actual device. Now how have I set up this program? Well first I dragged on some um, components onto my panel. So from component libraries, comms, we have MQTT client and this is a, a very low level MQTT implementation, in, implementation uh, which allows you to basically uh, subscribe to topics, set topics and values and then we also have uh, an IoT made easy component which sits a level above the MQTT and allows for very simple uh, message passing using uh, pre-designated topic strings. So I'll go more into this in, in, in a minute. We also have uh, network communications and this is basically Flowcode's abstraction layer to allow various uh, comms based libraries to connect and simulate and also connect to the real world hardware, in this case the wireless LAN connection of the ESP32 which is down here. So let's start let's start from the beginning. The Internet of Things made easy. So let's look at the properties of that. The host is the IP address of the broker. So this could be the Raspberry Pi, this could be something like the Thingspeak uh, broker that's uh, freely available. Um, if the if if uh, you are off network and you are on the internet, then as long as your broker is exposed to the internet, then you can type in the uh, WAN address of your router here, and that will then be ported through to your um, broker. We've got a port. So port is 1883 by default. The client identifier, this has to be unique for every node that connects to your broker. So just make sure that this string is a unique string. A network timeout, that's how long to wait for a response. 
Read timeout, how long to read, uh, to wait when we're listening for incoming messages. Keep a live time, well that's how long to wait um, in between, like if we're subscribing to a topic, we basically need need to uh, tell the broker how, how long in between uh, pings to, to keep that connection alive. Uh, we have the connection to the network comms, so we've just from the drop down here we've just selected our network comms component and that then draws an arrow to the network comms so you can see that they're connected. Uh, then authentication, this is up to you depending on if you turn this on on your broker um, you can obviously have it off and there's no authentication or you can have it on with a name and a password in my case they're both test and then we have number of topics. So we can have uh, a number of pre-baked in topics um, and you have a topic string. This is basically the topic identifier. Here you can see a more detailed example where we have manufacturer slash series and then slash data one. So for matrix TSL it could be matrix slash flow code slash and then the, 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 the sensor name that you want to, that you want to look at. Uh, we have some options on what to do uh, with with the data. Are we are we pushing data out to the broker? Are we receiving data from the broker and subscribing to a topic, or are we doing both? Are we pushing and receiving? In this case, I'm just going to be pushing out data. And the other components properties are fairly straightforward. The network comms um, is basically uh, the, the only property you really need to worry about is this network interface. And this is basically the number of networks on your computer. Um, so you can see that most of them don't give an IP address because they're not connected. Um, so you're looking for the one that gives you a valid IP address. So there we go, that's, that's the IP address of my computer. And then the final one, there's not really anything to uh, to set up there, it just, just uh, connects and goes. So now what we have to do is we have to call these in order. So we basically need to set up this, and then we need to set up this, and then we need to set up this. We do them in this order because the network comms relies on the ESP32, and the Internet of Things Made Easy relies on network comms, which relies on ESP32. So if we set them up this, then this, then this, then everything should be ready for when we come to use this. So, in our program, we call the initialize function. We call the function to connect to a network. So we could either host a network or we could connect. Normally you'd want to connect to your existing network. So you just put in the network name, the network password, and the number of seconds to wait um, for it to connect. We then initialize the network comms so that that's ready and then we initialize our internet of things made easy. We connect so that is connecting to our broker IP address here and then we basically enter a loop where we read the uh, voltage on this potentiometer and we publish that to ID 0 which has the topic string value and we're just publishing a float um, so there's various things you can publish, you can publish as a string an integer or a float so we're just pushing that value out as a floating point value okay so that's our first program to send a value so how do we receive the value? well here I've made a little uh, app developer program and you can see that it's, it's very similar setup in that I have internet of things made easy I have network comms. This time I don't need a third layer because um, I'm only ever going to be running in the sort of simulation runtime. Of course, if I did want to use this on an embedded device, I could quite easily add the third component here, which would be our uh, hardware connection to the network. So again, we have our settings here. So the IP address of the broker, the port, the unique client ID, um, the various timeouts, the connection to the network comms, authentication, number of topics, the topic string. So again we're using the topic string value. 
This time it's incoming and we're subscribing. Again in the network comms we've set the network interface to the one that gives us a reasonable IP address there. In our program we initialize network comms, we initialize IoT made easy, we connect to our broker, we check for incoming messages calling this read function which pushes to a variable called in. If in is non-zero, as in have we received something, then we're going to check the topic ID to see if it matches one of our topic IDs here, one of our topic strings. Uh, if it's zero, so it's matched topic ID zero topic string, then we get the payload as a float. Again, you can read this as a string, an integer, or a float. So we read it as a float and we'll publish that to our linear slide. We've also got a counter and this counter will count up to 100 and we'll see that because our read timeout is 50, uh, 100 times 50 is 5 seconds. So after 5 seconds we will issue a ping command and this will basically keep our connection to the broker alive so that when the broker receives a new piece of data it automatically will push to our subscription here. So what happens when I run these two programs? Let's just arrange them on screen so we can see them both at the same time. So I have the ESP32 um, publisher on the left I have the subscription on the right and if we run them then we should be able to pass some data in between. So here we go, you can see the data from our potentiometer being passed to our Raspberry Pi broker and then being collected by our subscription here. And you can see that every five seconds the green light flashes when we do our ping to keep the connection alive. Now the, the nice thing about MQTT is of course I've got my um, data and my subscription running on the same PC here, but these could actually be anywhere in the building, they could be anywhere in the world uh, potentially. The really nice thing is um, if I bring up my webcam then I have uh, an app on my phone called MQTT Dash uh, which I can connect to my Raspberry Pi server and then you can see I've got a value here which is set to not if you can see that set to 0 0.9 and as I move the data here you can see the value on the phone updating and what's really nice is if I can if I stop my um, transmission program here then I can actually go in and set the value from my phone 1.6 3.3 and so it's a very nice way of controlling something from an embed, um, embedded system from a PC running app developer or from a mobile device such as a mobile phone MQTT is very, very, very powerful um, and hopefully I've uh, given some of an indication of how to use it in your own programs. As always, I've been Ben Rowland. This has been Flowcode version 9. Many thanks for watching.